Hi, this is Cheryl back with you from Farmhouse Frugally. If you are new to my channel, I do a lot of crafts and we have phenomenal dump hauls. So a lot of furniture flips and a lot of trash to treasures. Today, I have a little dump haul for you. I found this gorgeous bubble glass light fixture. I am in a challenge coming up, I believe, Thursday, so stay tuned. You'll see what I do with that. These two beautiful chairs. Rather ugly mirror, but I'm also going to flip that on Thursday's video. Um, a bread box. I think I might make something other than a bread box out of this. I'm not sure. We'll see. And a, a an adorable child's cradle doll bed a whiteboard which is exactly the size that we needed for our church nursery project so that was a godsend and one of the ugliest trays I have ever seen in my life I'm going to flip today this table which clearly got split and glued this adorable little mold my husband actually picked that up for me. He knew I would love it. It has a little hanger, but for now, I just cleaned it and stuck it on a shelf because I think it's adorable, but it will be a good thing to try the clay in. And lastly, a little decorative birdhouse. So for today, five trash to treasures for you. The first thing is going to be the ugliest tray I have ever seen. I think this is supposed to be for the Day of the Dead and somebody actually paid $20 for it. It is wood. Um, so first thing I want to do is clean that up and paint right over it because I didn't want to look at it again. <laughs> I thought it was pretty horrible. <laughs> so I took my Rust-Oleum chalked paint in linen white and um, just went ahead and gave that two full coats to get that all completely covered. It was not raised paint, so it did not require any sanding, just cleaning. The aqua edges were actually a color that I sort of liked, so I thought maybe I might distress a little bit back. Um, after I painted it so that some of that aqua might show through. Sometimes with chalk paint, I like to go one way and then the other way to get it good and, and covered. And then sometimes with this brush, it's a little bit rough on the edges. It's not a real smooth brush, so it did leave... Um, a little bit of brush marks. So once I got that completely finished and dried, then I did take some sandpaper to sand that lightly um, just to get the brush strokes out of the chalk paint. Um, and then I had mixed up this color on my own for a different project and I had some left over and I absolutely love, it's like a robin's egg blue-green and um, I wanted to put a couple of coats of that on those handles so that um, it would change it completely and get the look that I was going for. That did take two, two complete coats of that as well. Already, it looks a million times better <laughs> before I've done much of anything to it. Here's where I just took that fine grit. This is a sanding sponge. I believe you can pick these up at Home Depot or Lowe's. They come a couple in a pack, and it's usually like a 120 or a 220 uh, finer grit, and I just wanted to clean that up. And then I had had this IOD Orchid Design um, transfer I had used on something some time back, and I had a few pieces of it left over, so I thought it would be nice to be able to use this Simple Rose transfer, and then the same, I believe the same IOD stamp I uh, had a few other things left over as well. I lifted it up and made a mess on this little edge of this leaf. And since I still had the pieces, I thought I would just go ahead and Mod Podge that little bit. You can actually, if you have to, 
if you make a mistake and you and you need to you can um you know use a marker or even some green paint or whatever usually you can't even tell if it's just a little thing like that but since i had the little pieces i thought i would attempt to glue them back on with the mod podge and i believe it was this same iod stamp that had the bee or the hornet down in the bottom so i um wanted to use that as well I don't remember all the names of all the IOD stamps. <laughs> There's so many of them out there, and some of them are harder to find because they do retire them. Um, but try one if you've never tried one. They're really e so easy to use. Major tip, if you're going to use chalk paint, let the paint cure 24 hours to 48 hours before you put the transfer on. It makes life so much easier, especially if you're going to use words. I find the word ones are definitely a little trickier. Um, they can um, take a lot more time, and so therefore, that's the one I would highly recommend you wait for the paint to cure. Didn't seem to have the same issue with the latex paint, personally. I'm not sure if anybody else feels the same way. Let me know if you use these transfers, if you've been able to use them right on latex paint without waiting for it to cure a couple days. I did add bare white wax to protect those handles and also it made the green just a little bit more matching the transfer. Took it outside, gave it a coat of the couple coats of Rust-Oleum clear matte finish. So here is the hideous tray I started with and the absolute beautiful tray that I finished with absolutely well worth picking that piece up which actually my husband had brought me home from the dump that is probably something I might have passed by to be honest when he first brought it home I was like yikes but I'm really glad now that I did it over so you'll have to let me know what you think of that transformation and that takes me on to item number two since I still had some of that paint left, I had been wanting to paint a book in that color, and I had picked up some, oh, I don't know, maybe in the summertime at Goodwill for, I believe, 50 cents a piece. They had a pretty decent um, cover on them. I uh, just wanted to go ahead and paint with that same beautiful robin's egg. Now, I mixed this in a glass jar, and I didn't 100% mix the green, the white, and the blue together at the bottom here, which I like. I love it when you get just a little bit of the streaks of some of the colors to come through, um, depending on the project that you're working on. So you'll see when I'm finished here what I'm talking about, but I really love that look. So if you are kind of going for something a little more vintage or just not so perfect, um, then it is nice to, you know, mix it 90%, 95%, but leave just a little bit in the bottom so that you can pick up some of those colors on your brush and uh, cause them to sort of streak through. See what I'm talking about here? I just love the little bit of white, a little bit of darker green. Now I'm taking a small piece of drop cloth and some ribbon from the dollar store, like a lace ribbon, and I'm making a pocket on this book with my glue gun, and um, just wanted to edge that lace on the top just to give that little bit of a finished look to the pocket. And you can see right here that I said, oops, I better go get my <laughs> silicone thing so I don't burn myself. Having burnt yourself on a glue gun, you learn that lesson very quickly. It can get really, really hot and can blister. So you want to be really careful to, um, to use a silicone finger guard or one of these makeup thingies, which I think work really awesome here. They never stick to the, to the glue. So that's awesome. Now, once I got that in place, um, I had this also this beautiful blue-green um, transfer from the IOD, I believe this was IOD transfer that has the, um, I want to say I see Paris, but that's not right. I'm not certain. If I can remember to link below the names of the transfers that I'm using. Um, but anyways, I had these, the wording left on this one, and I just loved the way the color was working really well with this book so um, in this case because the book is kind of a rough surface this came up very very easily i was able to get that 
transferred in just a minute. Um, so once I have that completely done, I just, I like to burnish it. You don't have to. You can use your finger. You can use a cloth. You can use the little plastic that comes with it. But I like to sort of press that down in there pretty good. Um, in this case, you don't have to wax it or seal it. You could, but you don't have to. And now, again, I'm using this lavender today, so I just wanted to sort of stick some of that in the pocket. I like the color of the purple against the robin's egg. I love that combination. It's very romantic, a little bit of um, vintage feel to it, and just gave that a little bit of a pop. And then I was sort of thinking about what to do with the front of the pocket because it was a little plain. I didn't want any more words, so I didn't have any more transfers that made sense. So I decided to just take some ribbon that I had had hanging around, and I just so happened to have some in that little bit of a blue-green and a little bit of the lavender color. So I just cut some strips with that same Dollar Tree lace to make a messy bow. And um, the piece that I had cut off was the wired edge. So I used that to just bind that whole little thing together um, to start with a bit of a, of a messy bun. A messy bun. Messy bow. <laughs> um, and then I had one of those tags left that I had printed a couple of weeks back when I did some of the um, spring bird nests. Um, and this one just so happened to have that beautiful blue color uh, in the tag with it. So I thought that was cute. I hung that on and then I just slipped it into the top of the pocket lace and tied that off. And then I wanted to just clip some of those longer strands and shape that a little bit better and then decided once I got that all done that really it was still just a little thicker than I liked so I just split some in half to make it even a little thinner give it a little bit more movement. I left the lace as was, but I just think that that came out so pretty. And um, I think I'm gonna keep this one for myself. Um, the colors in my bedroom kind of match this pretty robin's egg color. So maybe I'll have to add some pops of purple for summertime in my bedroom just to give me something new. I haven't touched that room in a couple of years now, so maybe a little purple might be nice. So now I am on to number three. After Christmas, someone had left this at the dump. One day of coal, 364 days of fun, I'll take my chances. <laughs> so I decided to paint that with a latex paint that I had. This is the same color in my living room. It's called Muslin Wrap, and I really love this color. So um, I just painted over this. It's like a, it's, it's a wood, it's like a balsam wood, um, and then some antiquing wax so that I could just sort of antique the edges um, a little bit on that. And then I'm making sure that I have the top when I am working on this. Always flip over your piece and look for the way that it's supposed to hang. I have certainly done something upside down before. And so on this one, this is another one of those IOD stamps that I had. Um, and I love this little sheep. And I thought it was so cute. I love the coloring. It was very antique looking. And I thought it would make a nice addition to this little sign. And this one went on so quickly because I waited probably two or three weeks between painting this and putting the transfer on. I just wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with it. Um, but working with this lavender today just gave me the idea of using this lavender IOD. And they have these circle frames. And so I took one of them, the smaller one, cut that out and decided to ring around the sheep with like a little lavender wreath. And he is just absolutely adorable. I love the way that this came out. You can see how quick and easy this transfer goes on. You can literally see it lift up real quick and easy. Boom, you just pull it up, pull it off. So waiting the week or two for curing makes all the difference. Even just 24 hours makes all the difference. Burnish that real quick and that was that. So simple, so easy and oh my gosh, I absolutely am in love with this piece. I just think that the combination of the antique cream, the vintage look, the sheep, and the lavender is just 
beautiful. That would be beautiful on the top of uh, a picnic basket, a wooden picnic basket, or a stool, uh, a table. Ooh, I may be on that other table. I'll use the bigger one. Ooh, that'd be awesome. Stay tuned. Let me know what you think of that. Now, on to number four. Now, I have been seeing everybody use these tin cans. I don't usually use tin cans, but I just so happen to need artichoke hearts for a dip I needed to bring to some place. So I had two cans of artichoke hearts, and when I opened them, I decided to open both sides, take my rubber mallet and push those down a little bit, and uh, glue the bottom, and then paint that in just the linen chalk paint. So on this one, I had this pretty tissue paper from somewhere. I think I probably bought it at Etsy ages ago. And I just took some water and went around using my paintbrush to give this a um, place to rip. If you rip it with water, it just gives you a nice rough edge and makes it look like something that has been there for a while. If I had used cream paint, I would have also used some dark wax on this, but since I had a white paint and a white background, I opted not to, but I, I do like that look of the antiquing wax on this, especially with the the sheet music feel. It looks a little bit vintage and um, it does well if you use the dark wax to make it look a little bit dirtier or antique -y looking. But in this case, I just took the white one and I went onto the white can with some simple Mod Podge just to get that tissue paper on there. So I guess I did not show you here that I had a lavender um, napkin left over from a project that I had done at the beginning of spring. Um, and so here I am just taking some of the little lavender flowers I had taken off. I just had some little bits and pieces left over, so I cut a few pieces out and just Mod Podged those right on top of this sheet. Paper, uh, sheet music tissue paper and um, I got those in a pack on Etsy um, be careful if you buy tissues um, napkins on Etsy because oftentimes you might pay a premium for just a couple you might be thinking you're getting an entire pack and you're only getting one or one of each um, so it can be costly sometimes the best deal is to go to like the dollar store or, or you know a store where you can get an entire pack less expensively so here I am just adding that um, to the top of that just to give that a little bit of a look and I also had a little butterfly in that same on that same napkin so now I've taken some foam from the dollar store and some of that lavender I got this lavender on Amazon it was actually recommended by Sandra at the Showman's Nest and I um, I think it was a pretty good quality um, if if I can remember, I might have it in my Amazon store, so I will see if I can link that below if you're interested in getting some decent lavender. It was a pack of, I don't know, maybe 16 bundles or something like that. It was a pretty decent amount, um, so I've used it. And one of the reasons why I'm, I'm using so much of it today is because I had quite a bit of it left over. And then I have this um, reindeer moss from the dollar store, which is actually pretty good quality stuff. I have to say, compared to the other mosses, I really like this reindeer moss. Um, it's nice and pliable. So I just put a little bit of that in and then I want to do something different. So I went into my jewelry making stuff and I had some of this long chain, silver chain. I thought kind of went with the tin can feel and um, just took a little bit of wire and my little crocodile, I think it's called, that I used to put some holes in the edge of the can. You just sort of punch it and then I ran the wire through the hole and into the chain um, on both sides and just twisted that around just to give that a long chain so that it would be longer than the 
top of the lavender in case I wanted to hang that up. I also could just lean it on a shelf um, as well, but I thought at the end of the day that that was kind of something different, something cute. So here it is, all finished. Simple, everybody's got a tin can. So this is a project that anybody could do, especially a good project, I think, for children, um, as long as you open the can for them. And honestly, I did not find the, taking the top and bottom of the can off to be in any way, shape, or form um, dangerous. It didn't have any jagged edges. So probably a really good project for a child. And then that takes me to the last one, number five. Um, same thing, I had another tin can left over, so I painted this one in the cream color, the wall color, and then just cut out this moth that I had left over from one of those transfers and a little piece of drop cloth. I did not find this as easy as I thought it would be to put the transfer onto the drop cloth. I thought because of its roughness, like the book, that it would absolutely be simple, but I had to really, really press down over and over and over on this, and I didn't bore you with the, how long it actually took me. Let me know if you have any trick on getting that off of there because that took well over five to ten minutes just for that one little thing. So I'm just taking my tin can, hot glue gun, and I just used the glue on the four corners for this. This is just a simple little thing. I didn't need to uh, make a pocket or anything like that. I just wanted to add that as a little bit of a design for the front of that. And actually the inspiration for this one came from Julie from Julie Signs and Designs. Hers she covered completely in the drop cloth fabric. Here is a picture I grabbed off of her website of the one that she did. Similar idea from hers um, since I also had a moth and some drop cloth although I painted mine and then um, she had used some large beads and some small beads at the top. I used this crocodile thingy to make some holes. Probably a, a one hole punch would probably even work because I found it went very easy through uh, the tin can. It wasn't hard at all to make those and it also um, could be sharp so you want to be careful uh, if you're doing this with a child. But once I did that I took some twine and I had some beads that we had gotten from the dump. It was some kind of a, I don't know if it was a head covering or a scarf or some bizarre looking thing. And I just went ahead and cut all those um, little mm -hmm. brown beads off and took the twine and just threaded them right on there to give myself a little handle. And uh, instead of using two sizes of beads, I just used all, all in the same size. I just like the brown that was similar to the color in the moth. Then once I was finished, I tied that off tightly so that I wouldn't have space between those beads and decided to go ahead and fill this one with some ivy or just some green bits and pieces that I had left over in my flower tower. And so I just filled that with some foam, some greenery, and some Spanish moss. And then that was all there was to that. I think that that came out really adorable. These are so simple. I have another idea. Once I get another tin can, I'm going to have to think of something to use a tin can for. Um, maybe I'll make chili. I don't know. I don't, I don't often open a tin can. Um, so I'll have to see what I can come up with. Um, and then, um, I, I, so I have at least one or two more ideas. And I also saw Kim over at Creative DIY Purpose. So if you have not checked out her channel, you definitely want to. She has at least a dozen tin can ideas. And um, she has some beautiful vintage finds and some beautiful creative ideas. I especially love how she incorporates scripture in so much of the items that she makes. So I'm sure she would appreciate if you would go over and hit subscribe. And here it is finished. I think it came out adorable. Nod to Julie once again. She also has such incredible 
I mean, she's the queen of this, right? I think she started this long before most of us, so we think we're probably already all following her, but if not, definitely Julie Signs and Designs. So I thank you for stopping by. I hope you have enjoyed these creative ideas today. And check out the visitor I had yesterday on my electrical wires. So please hit like and subscribe. And thanks for stopping by. I will see you in the next one. Make sure you hit that bell because Thursday I am in a new challenge. And that will be with a number of other creators.